Remember how I just did a video on VS Code trying to catch up with Cursor, which was a fork of VS Code, but had better AI features, and I kind of missed Super Maven and Copilot's where it all started? You know how chaotic this mess has been. The war to build the best AI-first editor for us coders has been intense, to say the absolute least. And my favorite little moment where I went from liking these tools to loving them was when I discovered a really nice Copilot alternative for VS Code called Super Maven. Super Maven was created by the same person who made Tab 9 originally, which was like the first ever autocomplete code tool. He has since left and started building much better tools to take advantage of this new AI wave. And the result was the fastest AI autocomplete model for devs. And it still is. And I find myself missing it when I'm using Cursor. All of that said, Super Maven's been kind of limited, not by their skills or their team or anything there, but by the thing that they're building around, VS Code. VS Code is a bit rough to work with, which is why Cursor decided to fork. And now that Super Maven has seen where they have gone with that, they're not going to sit around and just watch. They're taking this seriously. They just raised a whole bunch of money, and they're now going to start building a real editor. Also, before I forget, quick disclosures, I am an investor in Microsoft who creates VS Code. I'm an investor in Super Maven, which we're talking about today, and I'm an investor in Cursor. So I'm equally distributed with my biases here. I hope that cancels out, but I know you guys are going to complain anyway, so figured I'd put it out there. I try to be transparent with all of these things because I think it's important, so now you know. Anyways, we've raised $12 million from Bessemer Venture Partners to build an AI-focused text editor that integrates tightly with our models. We started at Supermaven because we wanted to create a co-pilot that was faster, more intelligent, easier to use, and accessible to everyone. We delivered that goal by creating the Supermaven editor extensions that are actively used by over 40,000 developers today, a decent number of which came from me shilling it, because it is, it's still kind of insane just how fast Supermaven is. It's literally like every character, it generates a new output, and I miss it. It was faster than IntelliSense with TypeScript. And as great as the cursor DX is, I miss the speed. And cursor, if you guys don't already know this, doesn't even really have their own model. I think that they're training some things, but they're largely relying on existing models. I almost want to Excala draw this out. Cursor versus VS Code versus Super Maven. Kind of annoying having versus in VS. You guys get the idea. So let's start with VS Code, because it's the thing that we all understand the most, hopefully. VS Code's parts are quite simple. VS Code built on top of Electron, powerful-ish extensions model, open source, uses Copilot for AI code. So apparently Copilot's model is Codex, which comes from GPT, from OpenAI. Probably a big part of why OpenAI and Microsoft got so close. So that's VS Code. Now let's talk about Cursor. Cursor is a closed source fork of VS Code fully compatible with all VS Code tools. So if you want to use VS Code extensions, not only can you use all of them, you can actually import and by default will import your exact config from VS Code. It's almost weird when you first open cursor because it just looks like VS Code. Levels had a banger tweet where he said he changed the icon and name of cursor to VS Code so his brain autocomplete would go to the right place. I have a fun problem where I recently started using cursor and I was using a different terminal that had a black like main color. So my editor was blue because it was VS Code and my terminal was black. Around the same time, I switched to Cursor as my IDE and I switched to Ghosty as my terminal. So when I'm trying to get to my code, I keep going to Ghosty because it's the blue one. When I'm trying to get to my terminal, I keep going to Cursor because it's the black one and it's driving me fucking insane. I'm almost at the point where my brain's autocomplete is there, but I might just give up on command tab and finally bind specific keys to specific programs because I'm going insane. Chat found a useful thing, GitHub Copilot Enterprise is running GPT-4.0. Very interesting. So most of the models for Copilot are special, but they're special just based on OpenAI stuff. Back to Cursor, though. Cursor's closed source fork of VS Code, fully compatible with VS Code tools, and notably, it has every model. <laughs> so they're not building their own model. It just gives you access to all of them. And they broke out of the VS Code extension model to allow better UX, or I should say DX. There's a lot of little things that Cursor does well. Serious pick thing, which is like a real project. Let's say I want this page to be responsive, and right now it is not. Command A, Command K, make this page responsive on mobile. Submit, and now it's gonna propose all these changes. I can select them all by doing Command Enter, 
and it applies them. But here's a thing none of the other editors do. Command Z doesn't undo what it applied. It brings back the application state. So I can now go through and manually for each of these, apply or not apply it, or Command Shift Z to go back. Command Z in the history isn't just the exact text of my editor. It also handles their AI steps, which I have found to be quite nice to be able to undo, but undo isn't undoing everything I just did. It's undoing the step that I just applied. I found that much more intuitive to work with. And you cannot do that with a VS Code extension, like at all. VS Code extensions are super limited when it comes to like the user experience things you can add, unless you're just putting in the sidebar. Speaking of limitations, VS Code and the sidebar, let's talk about Super Maven right now. It's a VS Code extension or NeoVim plugin. It's mostly just a dope model. <laughs> And it's a dope model. It is fast. It is trained on your diffs instead of your whole kist or like repo. It flies. And it also learns as you're doing things much better. So if I make a change like three times, it will apply that correctly going forward. It's like responsive. Feels better than any of the other models in that sense. They also have a chat. I don't like built-in chats. I just don't use them. It's cool it has it, but I just, I don't care. I'd rather just go open up Claude. But Super Maven is very limited because it is just a VS Code extension at the moment. So to, to TLDR this, VS Code is its own project, obviously, and it's using Copilot, which is OpenAI GPT based. Cursor is building a whole new UX on top of VS Code with the ability to use a lot of different models. And Super Maven is just a better model for developers that has pretty good integrations with existing editors. What's weird is when you put these two next to each other, they're like obviously competitors, right? But they're so different. This lives outside of VS Code, it has created, it has wrapped VS Code in better UX and DX, but not really innovated much on the model side, if at all. Whereas Super Maven went the opposite direction. They're building into VS Code and other things, and their focus has been on the model. They built a great model. Well, this is on I think I've been saying for a while, not necessarily in my videos, but like in person. I took a long time to try alternatives to Copilot because the friction of installing it was enough that I didn't care. I don't care if the responses are 17% more accurate or 25% faster, if it's not a massive win for me. Super Maven's speed was interesting enough to me that I gave it a shot and I was really impressed, but most people aren't going to switch their workflows from that. Whereas Cursor being a fully different editor experience, providing fundamentally different and better UX in the editor made it much more appealing. And that's why Cursor's adoption is as insane as it is. Super Maven's is still really good for a new project, just not quite the same level because it's harder to look at and be like, I need that right now. And both are competing with the thing that's already built into your editor, which is Copilot, which is made by VS Code and by Microsoft, which makes it hard to compete with. And I don't think just having a better model is enough. And I've been concerned about that for a while. Seems like I'm not the only one who's concerned because they're going all in on making an editor now. Our goal of making our product accessible to everyone raises a natural question. Why make a text editor? If possible, we would prefer to meet people where they are now and provide the best possible product without making users learn new tools. We're building an editor because with our most recent update that predicts jumps and deletions, we've reached the limit of what's possible with an editor extension. Yeah, I know they worked really hard to get this working. VS Code's extensions do not want you to jump around when you're writing code. It fights you hard when you introduce features like that. If I recall, this is also the killer feature that got Cursor going as hard as they're going. So yeah, they got it working. They had to fight to get it working, but they did. As we develop new models that support more features, the only way to take full advantage of those features is by having full control over the user interface. This requires us to build our own editor because extensions can't display their own UI elements in line with the code. They can only use the UI elements made available to them by the editor. I brought this up in another video, but uh, Pretty TS Errors is a great example of this. This is the plugin I use in VS Code to make my TypeScript errors look way less awful. It's great. There's even a video where I showcase it that they have embedded on the page now. A lot of others did videos on it too, which is really cool. It's a great extension. And you can see very clearly why someone would use this. Like, obviously better. So if you're curious how this works, it's actually embedded as an SVG icon because it was the only way to build this type of UI inside of VS Code. There's no way to make an alternative view that renders its own HTML. So instead he's rendering an SVG icon and then I'm breaking out of that in order to do this better actual UI. So like if I and make a, a demo function quick, just to have a type error. Cool. So if this takes user function, if I function 
takes user, not a name, whatever. We'll get this type error. And on top, we get the normal TypeScript error, but below I get the fancier one. In this case, it's a simple one. If it's a more complex one, which, uh, how do I want to demo a more complex type error? Cool. There we go. Now I got a more complex one. But notice that I have to scroll because it can't change the size to make it the right size. And it can't even hide the original error. I have to scroll to see it. And this is in cursor, by the way. Like theoretically, they could fix these things and open up extensions to be able to do more. Don't know if they're going to, probably not going to. But VS Code did not make it easy for poor Yoav here <laughs> to make this extension possible. So if it's that much hacking, like literally every commits document the custom CSS hack, like the, the things they have to do to make this work are insane. And that's just for giving you a better error on hover. Now imagine building all these fancy features where things are like showing this UI on top right there where I can tab to get rid of the thing and all of that. Like you can't just do that. If VS Code explicitly doesn't want you to just do that. So yeah, sympathy to anyone trying to build those things. It's not viable. Yeah, this is requires us to build our own editor because yeah, the inline stuff is impossible. This is a unique time in history of software development. With AI, new tools are possible that were unthinkable just five years ago. These new tools require new interfaces, and having an editor allows us to build those. We're a small team of five engineers. If this sounds exciting, join us. That sounds exciting. I can't remember. I can't really imagine a cooler place to work than either of those companies right now. Like, if you're a nerd about code, you're watching all these videos, you know what you're doing? It's a cool place to be. I think that's all I got on this one. I'm excited to see where all this stuff goes. And until next time. Peace, nerds.